Welcome to Loft Data One and thank you for tuning in. My name is Diego and today I'm talking about Rick and Morty season four. The show was created by Justin Roiland and Dan Harmon and season four was released on November 10th, 2019. The show follows Rick Sanchez and the Smith family as they go on zany adventures across the multiverse. The Smith family consists of Beth, Rick's daughter, her husband Jerry, their daughter Summer, and their son Morty. It's an adult comedy that shows us anything is possible in the multiverse. Now before I hop into my review, I wanted to remind you that if you want to support the channel, you can do so by leaving a like and hitting subscribe and the notification bell. Thank you, I really appreciate it. Also, as a warning, this review will contain some heavy spoilers, so continue at your own risk. Lastly, if you ever want to see anything reviewed, don't forget to let me know by leaving a comment and I will get to it slowly but surely. Thank you, I'm hopping in in three, two, one. Episode one, The Edge of Tamorty, Rick Die Repeat, was an interesting episode to start off the season. Rick introduces Morty to death crystals from Fort Bojulon Prime. These crystals show you how you're going to die and Morty keeps one because he sees a vision of himself dying old with Jessica. We see how strained his relationship with Rick is because he lets him die and makes no attempts to resurrect him. Instead, he uses Rick's tech and me seeks for a crazed vision-fueled quest to end up with Jessica. Thankfully, well, sort of thankfully, Rick had Operation Phoenix in place. His mind is rerouted into a separate clone from another dimension. Things seem good, but unfortunately, the Rick and Morty in that universe are fascist versions of themselves and he's quickly killed. His mind is continually rerouted throughout the episode and he's transformed into a teddy bear, a shrimp, and a a wasp. As a wasp, he's able to stop Morty from his crystal visions and does his signature 100 Years of Adventures rant before Summer ruins it. I loved all the cool references in this episode. Seeing the Meeseeks again was awesome and the Kirkland box made me laugh. The continuity of Rick's offline Phoenix protocol was cool too and I got some good laughs from Jerry in this episode. My favorite part of this episode was the ending, when it's revealed that Jessica wants to work in hospice and that's why Morty kept having visions of her. This episode might not have been the strongest one to kick off the season, but I really enjoyed it and I still give it a 9.5 out of 10. Episode 2, The Old Man in the Seat, is one of those deep, hard-hitting episodes, so I loved it. The main plot revolves around Rick and his shy, pooping habits. He's created the most majestic toilet for himself, but someone's recently used it, so he goes on a quest to hunt them down. This leads him to his new friend, Tony, despite Rick's self-denial. Rick gets excited to show up his new friend, but falls into a depressed state when he finds out Tony died. This ending was so sad for me because it shows how hard it can be to lose a friend. While all of that happened, the B plot revolved around Rick's intern, Glutie, developing an app with Jerry. I thought the side plot was hilarious because Glutie is so quirky and Jerry is so goofy. I also loved the spoof on dating apps and how they've damaged society because so many options creates indecision. Lastly, the ending was great because Jerry tries his global fin, a chemical that connects the whatever you want section of the brain to the whatever you have section. Jerry is a simple man and only wants to be appreciated for the little things in life. Considering that he's my favorite character and my enjoyment for the rest of this episode, I gave it a 10 out of 10. Episode 3, One Crew Over the Crew Coos Morty. Yeah, yeah. One Crew Over the Cuckoo's Morty was a plot twist after plot twist episode. Rick and Morty trek through some ruins for a treasure and find out Miles Knightley beat them to the punch. This infuriates Rick because he hates heists and Miles is a heist artist hosting Heist Con. I can relate to Rick a little here because I also think heist movies are silly and they're rarely done right. Anyways, Rick puts together a team to infiltrate Heist Con and it's the funniest cliche compilation ever. Rick Sanchez, you son of a bitch! Sanchez, you son of a bitch. You son of a bitch! I mean! Rick ditches the team and agrees to a high stop against Miles, all while hating on the audience. Your booze mean nothing! I've seen what makes you cheer! In a rabbit hole of plot twists, it's revealed that Rick created Heistotron, a robot that calculates Miles' plans and stays one step ahead with double crosses. As expected, Heistotron goes rogue and Rick uses this experience to disillusion Morty with heists. I love this episode because of all the crazy plot twists and double crosses. They were so outlandish and silly and I got a good laugh. I also enjoyed the satire and insults directed toward heist movies because they aren't very creative. Lastly, I like the appearance of Elon Musk as Elon Tusk. So, I gave this episode a 9.8 out of 10. Episode 4, Claw and Hoarder, Special Rictims Morty, was a bizarre and fun episode for me. Morty begs for a dragon and Rick concedes, even though he thinks dragons are dumb. Morty signs a blood scroll with a wizard for Balthrama who doesn't care for the adventures Morty has in mind. Instead, Rick and Balthrama become close and after a night of partying, they soul bond. It's very uh... Yeah. Morty demands a refund and the wizard takes Balthrama back. Rick, Summer, and Morty then set forth to the wizard's land to save Balthrama and uh... There's a lot of awkward soul bonding. Overall, I love the medieval themed adventure and I got some good laughs from it. I also really, really enjoyed the B-plot with Jerry and a talking cat. He helps Jerry be more adventurous, but the cat has a terrifying background. <laughs> 
at least now maybe get the hell out of here but i got nowhere to go get out get out i am hoping beyond hope that we will find out what that cat's background is but if we never do that's okay either way i thought this episode was hilarious and i gave it a 10 out of 10. episode 5 rattlestar rick lactica revolves around morty ignoring rick messing with space snakes and paying the consequences despite all of their adventures together morty never learns i guess that is to my benefit because i do get a good kick out of this adventure and i love the terminator spoof this episode has one of the best scenes in the show with the evolution of the snakes leading up to a fight for survival amongst Rick and Morty. I also got some really good laughs from the B-plot as Rick makes Jerry lighter than air and gives him heavy shoes to stay grounded. Things don't go well for Jerry, but I admire his courage and determination to not ask for help. Lastly, I love the return of the Time Police Meatball as he fixes things by beating up a caveman snake. This episode was creatively fun and I gave it a 10. Season 4 is very heavy on the inceptions and plot twists and episode 6, Never Rick and Morty, builds upon this theme. Rick and Morty are stuck on a never-ending time train trying to escape and the episode serves as an anthology. It's a very meta dissection on storytelling and I laughed a lot. The guys have to fight a couple of older gentlemen, each increasingly and shockingly stronger than the last. The old Ultimate Big Bad is Story Lord, and he kills me with his one-liners. There can be no destination without a journey. I mean, he's not wrong. I enjoyed how this episode was a satire on canonical storytelling, including the hero circle that Dan Harmon uses. I also loved all the one-off self-references like Evil Morty, Gazorpazorp, and Blips and Chips. I also loved the ending of this episode as Rick and Morty pray to Jesus Christ, who uses his powers to escape the train, revealing it's a toy Morty got from the Citadel. It's very silly, but I thought it was cool. The end credit story train ad made me laugh and I was happy the provided URL directed me to the Rick and Morty page on the Adult Swim website. So I gave this episode a 10 out of 10. Episode 7, Promortius, starts us off on a unique alien planet as Rick and Morty are controlled by face huggers. They escape their bondage because of a fluke and quickly set about destroying the planet. I got a good laugh when they returned home and realized that Summer was still on the planet, forcing them to return. After killing lots of other aliens, they discover that Summer is the empress to the aliens because she had a toothpick in her mouth and couldn't be face hugged. They all escape with no lessons learned and decide they don't need to try so hard anymore. This episode was goofy and action packed, but my favorite part of it was the ending. I love how Rick and Morty both worry they have alien eggs growing in their stomachs, but it turns out they just have diarrhea. I also love the end credit with Summer's friend Trisha saying she wants to sleep with Jerry. It was very played out and made me laugh. I gave this episode a 9.6 out of 10. It certainly wasn't my favorite episode of the season, but I did greatly enjoy it. Episode 8, the vat of acid episode, was by far my favorite episode of the season. Rick tries to get some crystals from mobsters, but they get double-crossed, so they jump into a fake vat of acid Rick had set up earlier. There are lots of complications with the vat as the gangsters don't leave, and Morty gets pissed and tries to kill them. As they gather the crystals and leave, Morty completely shits on Rick's plan and says it's his dumbest idea ever, his greatest failure. This makes Rick angry, and he tells Morty to come up with a technological idea, so he comes up with a button that saves your place in time, allowing you to restart. Rick calls this idea dumb, but after being challenged by Morty to build it, he concedes. We then get a funny compilation of Morty using the button and enjoying his life as he makes mistakes and tries new things without consequences. We then get my favorite scene of the season where Morty meets a girl and they fall in love and take a trip that goes south. They fight to survive and as they're recovering, Jerry accidentally presses the button, restarting Morty's life. I don't often hate Jerry's character, but this was one of those moments where I was livid. Morty can't salvage his relationship and eventually quits using the button, telling Rick he's learned his lesson about how it's impossible to live life without consequences. We then get a huge plot twist where Rick reveals there were consequences and each time Morty used the button, another Morty in a different dimension died. This breaks Morty and he finally tells Rick his vat of acid idea wasn't dumb. This episode ended darkly and showed how sadistic and far Rick is willing to go in order to maintain some control over Morty and the family. Rick was the villain of this episode. To my benefit, everything in this episode hit. The storytelling, animation, soundtrack, score, and character character development. So, I gave this episode a 10 out of 10. In episode 9, Child Rick of Mort, we get another example of how fiendish Rick is when it's revealed he slept with a planet and is now having kids. Beth refuses to let him abandon the kids and works with him to build a society from his children.
children. Jerry tries to take the kids camping and they absolutely destroy him and his feelings so he adventures alone. He runs into an offshoot of Rick's children and builds an army to attack Beth's civilization. As this happens, the true father of the children, Zeus, appears and he beats the crap out of Rick. Rick is only accidentally saved by Summer and Morty who got high and lost control of an alien ship they found. This episode was an interesting standalone adventure because I enjoyed it and it felt like every family member got equal screen time. I also enjoyed seeing how Rick couldn't win the fight against Zeus. It's a reoccurring theme in this season. Despite all of his genius, Rick isn't always in control or strong enough to fight everyone and everything on his own. He needs the family, but the family doesn't need him anymore. They've started to outgrow him. Anyways, I gave this episode a 9.8 out of 10 because of good themes and a lot of laughs. Episode 10, Star Mort Return of the Jerry was a freaking cool episode for me because it's a continuity episode. Season 3 ended with Beth wondering if she's a clone and it turns out she is, I think. The real Beth is in space, fighting wars, and she discovers a proximity tracker in her neck. She thinks it's a bomb and goes back to Rick where they fight with Pokemon balls. They talk things out for a bit, but things escalate and the clone version of Beth gets involved. Things continue to spiral for Rick as the Galactic Federation gets involved and he fights Tammy and Phoenix person. He's not strong enough to win and gets shredded until the Beths save him. It's then revealed that he himself does not know who the clone is and the entire family ends up disgusted with him, leaving him alone to deal with his emotions. I am a sucker for continuity, so I love this episode and the introduction of Space Beth. She's really cool and can mostly go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Rick. I also love the return of Tammy and Phoenix person and was happy she finally died. Hopefully, Rick can help his friend. Despite the serious tones in this episode, I still laughed a lot thanks to Jerry. So, I gave the season finale a 9.7 out of 10. Overall, I thought season 4 of Rick and Morty was written really well. It's unfortunate for me that it comes after season 3's success because it doesn't quite live up to the hype, but it was still a fun episode for me and I thought it was a lot more enjoyable than most people thought. This season was all about how Rick's destructive actions and toxic behavior are having increasingly less influence on the family. To be clear, the family doesn't care about Rick and his antics like they used to. It's also interesting seeing how Rick loses control throughout the season. He doesn't have the family's respect and he loses many of the fights he gets in. Despite Despite my desires to see Evil Morty in this season, I was very happy he wasn't included. It adds to my excitement for future seasons and lets me appreciate these standalone adventures in this season with dragons and facehuggers. Tying up loose ends, I enjoyed the inclusion of Space Beth, Tammy, and Phoenix Person. They satisfied my continuity itch. I also enjoyed the montages this season had, such as the snake evolution and Morty's relationship. This season had great jokes, amazing music, and pretty animation. If you weren't keeping track of my previous scores, that's okay. Because because I gave season 4 of Rick and Morty a 9.8 out of 10. I had a lot of fun watching this season, so if you're a Rick and Morty fan, then I'd highly recommend you watch this one. If you're a newcomer to the show, then I'd still recommend you watch it, but be aware that sometimes the humor can be crude and crass. Anyways, thank you for listening to my review of Rick and Morty season 4. If you enjoyed the content and want to support the channel, then please take a second to like and subscribe. If you did not enjoy the content, then thank you for sticking around, I appreciate it. As always, I would love to read what you have to say so leave a comment down below and let me know what you're thinking also if there's ever something you want to see reviewed don't forget to let me know by leaving a comment and i will get to it slowly but surely lastly if you want to see some more from me then you can check out my vlogs linked up above or my podcast good friends again thank you for watching my name is diego and i will see you next time <laughs>